everybody. Welcome here to the Robert J. Collins Arena today. I'm Pat Groth here, and I have my host here with me. Sean Rosenboim, a pleasure to be here, Pat. Uh, absolutely, it's gonna be a great day here. We have the Brookdale Jersey Blues facing off against the Camden, Camden County Cougars. Brookdale coming in at seven and two on a current seven game win streak right now. Camden lining up at four and four. And Brookdale ranked number, number nine in the country right now, the women's team here. So it should be a good matchup. Camden, you know, playing a little bit better as of late. And so look for Brookdale and Camden put a good show on tonight. Absolutely, we have a you know huge honor for head coach Bob Dubina and his women's squad here, being ranked what was it ninth in the country. That's yep. that's huge for them. So uh, definitely stick around for today's action. We have um, you know a couple big things. Uh, our very own Paxson Reddington was named a um, the Garden State Athletic Conference's Player of the Week uh, last week. So you know huge for her. We'll get an interview with her at halftime. So definitely stick around for that. Um, what do you think is going to be the keys to the game uh, today? Defense, rebounding, offensive rebound especially and making your free throws. 10, absolutely, yeah, so absolutely stick around while we uh, get to the action here. All the players are being announced. And uh, stick around, thank you. Number 15, Cassandra Taylor. And number 22, Kamari Talley. The head coach of the Cougars is Molly Ann Light. She's assisted by Harrison Carcillo and Jackie Trekamis. Woo! Bring them out, bring them out, bring them out, bring them out. It's hard to yell when the now, ladies and gentlemen, the starting lineups for your Jersey Blues. From an elephant, number five, Samantha Carlson. Number 11, from Little Silver, Lauren Fowler. Number 12, from North Bergen, Jasmine Palma. From Homedale, number 15, Paxton Reddington. And from Red Bank, number 42, Maria Trapp. The head coach of the Blues is Mr. Bob Dubina. He's assisted by Mr. Brad Fraley, Mr. John Rivera, and Miss Alexa Ryan. The athletic trainer is Mr. Jim Anderson. The officials for tonight's game are Sabrina Ism, Robert Hart, and Nicole Stasek Wyatt. Alright, so as we start to take up the court here, after all of our pregame announcements, we'd like to uh, go ahead and recognize right off the bat, Domino's Pizza of Red Bank, proud to support the Brookdale's men and women's basketball teams this season. Domino's is located at 60 English Plaza in downtown Red Bank. You can also place your order online at dominoes.com. So definitely order up while you're watching today's doubleheader of the men's and women's game. Girls seem fired up today, Pat. Coming out of introductions here, a little bit, a uh, little bit of excitement going on here. Should be a good one. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, they went on a, a bit of a road trip there over the last couple of weeks, um, beating. Let's see here. We have the list. They defeated uh, Bergen, Rockland Community College, Mercer Community College of Philadelphia, and Middlesex. So some good wins in there as well. Uh, taking up the court for the Cougars. Passing the ball between number 11, Kathleen Velez. Out wide to number 10, Siani Blackson. And a lot of passing around. Taking up the shot from three. Was it a three? I don't know. It's a two. Foot might have been on the line there. It got it for a two. Still a good basket. Good sign for Camden County early. Getting that early basket here. Back out to wide, Paxson Reddington for the three, and right it's back. good. We want it early and often, Paxson Reddington averaging 13.5 points per game. Well, she's well on her way to that already. And wide open number 11, Kathleen Velez misses the three. Almost got the, the steal there, but Jasmine Palma, who worked her way into the starting lineup, grabbed it from her. Quick pace here early, start of the game. Turnover. Blues ball. Jasmine Palm must have been keeping up that fierceness that she brings here to the Robert J. Collins Arena when they took that road trip, earning herself a starting spot. Yeah, definitely. She's been, you know, we're probably the one we talk about the most. You know, Quick pass and shoot there over to uh, Samantha Carlson for the easy bucket. Brookdale transition, transition nicely into the defense. 
bit of a 3-2 matchup zone with basically the matchup is just staying with the ball until the next man can come over and help defend. A little bit of a different look than a traditional 3-2 zone defense. Brookdale grabbing the rebound there. Trying to hit an open Reddington over in the corner again. Couldn't get it to her, but Palma gets a shot at it. Doesn't go. Great rebound by Maria Trapp. Puts it up and gets the opportunity for the third point. The, the arena is just erupting tonight. The, the, even the bench is going crazy over there. Well, Trapp ignited the crowd with her effort. She got the offensive rebound, went right back up with it, didn't hesitate, drew the foul. Chance here to get uh, the extra three-point play here. 10.9 points per game for Maria Trapp through the season. Couldn't get the three-point opportunity to go for. Camden trying to rush down the court here. Traveling. It will get called on a travel. A little bit over anxious there by Williams. Settle herself down a little bit. She'll be all right. Coming back down the court, we have Lauren Bowler and Jasmine Palma. Inside's Carmen. Oh. No, oh, back out. They're passing all around the world. It's a bit of a different lineup uh, than we've seen from Coach Dabina. Reddington with the catch and shoot. Couldn't get it to go from the three-point line. But Brookdale grabs the rebound, lets it loose again. Couldn't grab it, but they get another rebound inside to trap, and that's the basket that you want. Yeah, definitely. Good job of hustling, getting to the loose ball. Found the trap at the right place at the right time under the hoop. The hand in her face, the 6-2 the Carlson on Trapped the 5 Dominating the Valets. boards early on. Palma, she'll get some ribbon from her teammates on that one, missing the easy basket. You know Carlson, hustle back, Carlson. helping her teammate out. That's why you hustle. That's why, how you get easy points. Now wide number 11, Kathleen Velez. Couldn't get that shot before, had a hand in her face. Big 6-2 uh, Samantha Carlson. A lot of outside shots early here from Camden. Notice and looking at the roster here, they do have a, a couple of girls that are, you know, on the smaller side, five foot, five two, five two. So, you know, the, the larger Brookdale squad is going to, you know, prove to be pretty hectic for them. Definitely. It's going to probably cause a lot of outside shots, hesitation to come into the middle with, you know, the size advantage that Brookdale has. So look for, a lot, you know, as the trend is kind of starting, we're starting to see it a little bit here with the outside shooting. But Brookdale themselves taking some outside shots here, too. And they've had some of them go for him, but yeah. the last few have, uh, have fallen a little bit short. Well, I think Brookdale's confident in the, in the offensive rebounding skills. They've shown that they can do it in the past. And, you know, facing a smaller team, they may not be so hesitant to uh, shoot some outside shots, hoping that even if they miss, they can get the offensive rebound and put them back in. Foul called there on our Samantha Carlson, number five for the Jersey Blues. It'll give Camden Cougars possession coming down the court. Inside pass there. And they will get her another travel. So that's two for Camden so far in the opening minutes. And, you know, it's a result of, of the, the defense. The defense came, rotated over to the post player, sealed it off, had nowhere to go, took an extra step, trying to get to the basket. Just a great defensive effort there by Brookdale. The laser pass inside to Maria Trapp. Got knocked out. It will remain Brookdale's ball. Blues ball. Much quicker pace than we've seen. Yeah, to, for, for the other yeah, for yeah. the other couple games that, that we covered, um, absolutely a much quicker pace to the to the start of the game. And I think you can relate that to the kind of the high that Brookdale is riding on this big win streak that they've been kind of having. Another inside basket for Trap, and she's getting them going inside early with some easy buckets underneath the basket. It's really been a big key to this 13 and two start here. And this is what we've seen. You know, they they like to go up and they go up early and often yeah. in most of these games with a 13 to two lead right now. That's huge. It'll be Brookdale's ball. Blues ball. Again, Brookdale's getting the easy baskets, the ones right underneath the basket, or as Ken's maybe shooting a little too much outside, you'd like to see them maybe try to get to the basket a little bit more. Oh, it's going to be a long day. A lot of, a lot of tough, tough baskets having to shoot from outside. Yeah. Outside, Jasmine Palma trying to rush in. She was at an open shot there, decided to drive in. And her and Maria Trapp couldn't get it to fall. Big pass down court. That was very risky. See, Camden pushes the pace a little bit, runs the break, gets inside, you know, gets the foul called. Much easier way to score than 
chucking up outside shots early here. So a much needed trip to the free throw line here for Canada. Get themselves going maybe a little bit here. So number 11, Kathleen Velez will take a couple of shots. She's been active early here. She has, yeah. Now we've been calling her name a couple of times. So students, don't forget, there is still time to register for Brookdale's 2014 spring term. Uh, open registration ends on December 23rd and resumes on January 2nd through the 4th. Payments are due at the time of registration or you may be dropped from classes. Brookdale's Winterham class, uh, Winterham classes begin on January 6th and the 15 week spring term starts on January 22nd. So make sure you get in there. Call 732-224-2770 for any appointments. Trap coming down, hit, hitting a jump shot here. She's been, she's been hot early, getting a lot of, a lot of good looks here. Passing around there, trying to find an open shot. They got one, and it couldn't fall for him. Again, a good job of rebounding by Brookdale, not allowing Camden to come down and get those offensive rebounds. Carlson and Trap combining on the rebound there. Good move by Bowler. And a great move there by Bowler. 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 Sidestep through the lane, got up, drew the contact, and finished it off strong. Very good move, and she will get an opportunity to make it a three-point play. Williams checks back in for the Cougars. Brookdale out to a really quick start here. And it lands for her. So Brookdale coming out to a very early 18 to three lead. With about just under 15 minutes remaining in the first half. Yeah, you've seen this a lot on a lot of Camden's offensive possession, just passing around the perimeter, trying to find some yeah, open shot. Trying to shot. find that open shot. Yeah. Not really working the ball inside, but they're doing a really good job of denying the entry pass, putting pressure on them when they do catch the ball. Right on cue, they try it on the inside and draw the foul. Number 15 of the Cougars, Cassandra Taylor. Also number 42, Maria Trapp. That's her first personal foul, Brookdale's third. Team yeah, and if you're Brookdale, you, you may be a little worried here. You know, a couple easy free throw opportunities here when they're really having trouble scoring, you know, getting good shots, coming in the fouls, letting them get easy baskets here. But unfortunately, they aren't, <laughs> aren't able to convert them. Let's see if she can make the second one. And she grabs it. So you go one for two on that. Take any points you can get at this point with the, the, the big lead that Brookdale has laid on top of them. Out to Maria Trapp, back over to Palma. She's got Bowler up at the top, and she hits it. Lauren Big Bowler. three there by Lauren Bowler. Again, good shooting early from Brookdale. And still trying to find the inside. Cassandra Taylor trying to force her way in again. And it looks like another foul called on Brookdale. So they're going to have to watch themselves doing this a lot early yeah. in this game. Number 12. We're not even seven minutes in here. We have four team fouls. So yeah. You don't want to give them uh, easy baskets at the free throw line, especially since they're having such a tough time getting good looks here. Absolutely, yeah. Outside there. The travel called. Traveling. That's the Blue third ball. for the Cougars. Head coach uh, Molly Ann Light Trouble, of Camden yeah, can't be happy turnovers. about that one. The few off offensive possessions they've had, they've squandered with, with foul trouble and, and missed opportunities. Trap on the inside, and it's good. Again, Trap, Maria. easy basket trap. right underneath the hoop. Bowler. Getting it done. They're That's really huge. having trouble with her down there. Yeah. They grabbed the rebound, number five, Ayanna Williams. Trying to make her own shot, number three. It gets her own rebound, Noel Higgs, but it's a little bit overpowered there. Good job out. in transition yeah, there, coming Redding, down the fast and Bowler. Ran into in the corner, in and out. And looked good, couldn't go for her. And Brookdale gets it. Good, good job of hustling to that ball. Oh, another good job, though, by Camden getting to that one. 
De great defense. The outlet passes yeah. there. There it is. Great pass. That's one you got to make there. You get a big opportunity like that, good defensive possession, and you let it slip away. Definitely. You got to take the easy ones, especially here early on with this deficit. Maria Trapp couldn't get that one to fall from the outside. Camden again pushing the pace here. Yeah, trying to trying to run it inside there. Well, five foot Siani Blackson. She, probably, she had the right idea there, just was a little indecisive of what she wanted to do when she got through the lane there. Probably could have went up to the basket, maybe decided to pass it out. Her teammate really wasn't ready for it. So Jasmine Palma comes out. Looks like she's grabbing her hand, maybe. They're calling the trainer over now. Take a look at that. Hopefully she can get back in the game soon. We have Marina Lukianov checking in for her. First action we'll see. See if she can make an immediate impact coming into the, the game here. Inside to trap. Yeah, trap. Good really again. giving them problems in there, trap. Marina the lack of size trap. really starting to show here for Camden. And they do have a couple of uh, more sizey players on their bench, you could say. Looks like they got a bit of the smaller crew out right now. Inside there, yeah, maybe Luke trying to, and it's good. Maybe trying to run, you know, push the pace a little bit. Not working the size of Brookdale. You know, interesting to see that Coach Dabina went with Trap uh, as well as uh, uh, Samantha Carlson, both in the starting lineup. Really big, big lineup for Brookdale there. I expect to uh, maybe see a timeout soon coming from the, the Camden bench. Slow it down a little bit, maybe switch up the pace. Uh, they check in number 11, Kathleen Velez again. As you can hear from our announcer, Sanslow Velez and DeGroosh will check in. For Camden. Nope. Almost hit Coach Light over there. Cougars ball. Hey, Luke, you know, probably trying to make a move without the ball. Make sure you guys, you got to make sure you secure that ball before you start moving. So number 11, Kathleen Velez of Camden coming back down the court, who was putting the team on her shoulders a little bit in the opening minutes, took a, took a breather on the sidelines. Again, remember, two of Camden's four points are from the free throw line, so they're really having trouble here in their half-court offense getting some baskets. There you go. And it's, you know, just another passing around the world here, trying to find an open shot. It's awesome. Again, up with eight seconds left on the shot clock. Yeah, again, a bit of a rush shot. You know, sh just really not not looking for the inside shot. Really trying to just force the issue from the outside, and they're really gonna have to find something. You know, something else to do because right now it's not working for them. I'm surprised that uh, head coach Molly Ann Light hasn't you know taken a timeout, slow things up a little bit, and try to get her team under wraps. Well, sometimes coaches you know want to see what their team has to fight through it. The ability to, you know to to persevere through adversity. Yeah. So, you know, and they're doing a you know, pretty decent job here. A little bit of a break here. And again, they pass it out for the three instead of the easy basket. But you know what? She hit it. So there you go. Number 10, Siani Blackson hits the three that time. Blackson. Inside, Trap inside. Yeah, she is just, she's demolishing on the inside. It's, yeah. getting, it's gonna get ugly. They're gonna have to put, yeah, and I think as, as we say that, here comes number 30, Alessandria Williams. Uh, checking over the scorer's table just to get some size in there, give Trap a little bit of trouble because she's really dominating them inside right now. And 5'11 freshman coming in for Camden. That shot just goes right over the rim there. Paxton Reddington couldn't haul it in by the, the out of bounds mark there. Alexandria Matthews enters the game for Camden. So we'll see if Matthews can uh, make a little bit of a difference here on the inside. And I think Brown one of the keys the on the defensive end for Camden here is to play a little bit better on the offensive end to get better shots. That way, limit Brookdale's transition baskets and really letting them get easy looks underneath, underneath the hoop. Yeah. So that was number one. Alexis Brown checks in for Camden. That's a matchup nightmare there. You had number 21, Nadio Sanslow, 5'7 on the five-foot guard there. Ten, Siani Blackson. First personal, third 
Team foul. A foul called on Camden. Brookdale taking the inbound pass out to Reddington. Had the shot for a second, doing some pump fakes. A lot of fouling early on here. We have four for 14 fouls on Brookdale and four as well for Camden. Nine minutes remaining in this first half of play. Camden's fourth team foul. Pass and rounds to number 20. Megan DeGruce takes the shot. Couldn't get that one to land. Camden coming in a bit of a fast break. Brookdale's got most of their players down there, though. Out wide to number 10. You can't leave her open. She's She's been their only source of offense right now. Yeah, making the last two shots. Big threes for him. Siani Blackson, five-foot freshman. Very vocal out there on the court as well. So Trapp trying to grab the rebound there. Call for the foul. A little bit of a better job by Kenton. Maybe the uh, the addition of Matthews and some size three, helping him out. And first right first on cue, fifth. she Team gets checked out. So a uh, productive couple minutes. Yes. The coach saw something there. Maybe she didn't like it. Pulled her out and... Uh, Still got a pretty big crew in there. You know, you, you got 22, Kamari Taley in there, 5'8", so not too bad. Trying to make something happen here. Eight seconds left on the shot clock. They got to do something very Ooh, soon. Good move. A little high off the glass, couldn't get it to go, but like you said, that was definitely a great move. Great effort there by number 11, Kathleen Velez. Ooh. Traveling, Cougars ball. So yet another travel call in yep. the game. First one on Brookdale, I believe. Camden really, you know, coming off a of screen, really trying to find someone in the corner. But as a result, an illegal screen called. So Brookdale get the ball back here. Eight minutes remaining to score oh, 29 to 10 Kathleen in favor of the Blue. Jersey Blues. First personal, fifth, team foul. Megan DeGruish, number 20, for the Blues bringing it down the court with Marina Lukianov. Out to Reddington, trying to find somebody open, calling a play. You heard the assistant coach from Camden calling out. Number 11, yeah. Kathleen Velez. They got called on it for the Second reach. Personal, Camden's sixth team foul. Camden's defensive intensity picking up a little bit here. Doing a much better, better job of making it more difficult for Brookdale to get the ball down low. Are you looking up trying to make something happen? And I think they realize that maybe the start of the game, maybe a little bit of a lack of effort or intensity on the defensive end was what was costing them. But here they're definitely picking it up and really rotating to the ball well. Luke Nav couldn't get that one to go. A tough bit, shot. Tough shot. Well challenged by Camden. Oh, good move there. Taking a peek over by the scorer's table. Looks like Brookdale's bringing in a couple of legs here. You got Bowler, Carlson, and I believe that's Palma as well, looking to check in. The second unit having a little bit of trouble scoring here. You still had a uh, still had Trap and Reddington in there from the starting squad. You're bringing in the remaining three who opened up the game. So number five, Viana Williams. Misses the first shot. And the three players Coach will check Palmer in for the Jersey Blues. Palmer. Check back in for Brookdale. Williams trying to make her second shot. Couldn't get that one to go either, so you get an opportunity and you you let it go like yeah. that. It's tough. It's gonna be tough to cut into the lead, you know, when you get easy, easy free throws like that, yeah. you really gotta convert on them. And again, as we say, trap right underneath uh, the basket. Miss an easy one, but you know it's important to know that she got the good look there, and, and it's you know it's because her teammates are getting her the ball and finding her in space. Great pass there, up wide, but they again couldn't couldn't capitalize on it. Sloppy passing there, almost went bad for Brookdale, but the deflection went right back into Samantha Carlson's hands. Again, trap down low, nobody else there. 
high off the glass again. She's got to take a breath and, yeah. and try to get some of these easy. Oh, right to her. It's like she thought she had a blue jersey on. Trap again on the weak side. There she is right there, wide open. Takes the shot and finally it was gets there. it. I mean, so, yeah. I mean it, that's been there, and I don't know what they're doing different with, with Bowler and Carlson in the game, but when they're in there, it's a lot easier for Maria, Maria Trapp to get good looks. Quick oh, shot there. Thrown away by Trapp there. Good move. Good finish. Number 11, Kathleen Velez. And she's been active here. Really doing a good job. Part of the small backcourt they got, you know, for Camden, but really taking advantage of their quickness. And they're not doing such, you know, a terrible job of actually getting into the paint, but it's it's once they get in there, they're, they're trying to pass it out to shooters. Maybe not, you know, the best idea. Maybe try to go to the basketball and get opportunities like this to finish at the hoop and get a, you know, a three-point opportunity. And you can see head coach Bob Dubina visibly frustrated on the uh, sidelines. You know, I mean, a lot of easy, you know, easy baskets left the out thing. there. Here's one. I mean, you have it's one on one right here. Uh, good job of taking that charge. She toughed it out. Yeah, she did. She stood right in there and saw it coming, and, and you know, she, she took it. Didn't flinch. So number five, Ayanna Williams kind of hiding out back there, waiting for a, uh, a play just like that to happen. Palma checking out now in place is Kimberly McNillis, our maybe, five foot freshman. Yeah, maybe trying to get her in there for some quickness to combat the couple of five footers there for uh, Camden. In the last game we hear McNellis was chucking up a lot of threes. So let's see if she uh, maybe reined that in a little bit. Some of them were good shots, some of them not so good. Bowler back up to DeGruche. Drives and takes the shot right from the stripe. Yeah, right from the defense may be a little, a little worried about that interior. Just kind of sagged off a little bit, gave her a little bit of room to take a dribble and uh, get a good shot there. So the very active number 10. Sayani Blackson for Camden. Out to the other active teammate of hers, Kathleen Velez. Big block there. 24, Jasmine Stanback. Good job of coming over to the other teammates. Uh, kind of left the uh, corner there under the basket open, but she got there quick enough. I mean, you know, couldn't couldn't get it clean, but definitely make them earn it at, at the free throw line there, especially since they've been struggling there a little bit. Yeah. But nine fouls, you got to watch yourself. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's early to have nine fouls. They're really going to have to buckle down a little bit here yeah. and uh, really not, you know, give them any, you know, that's a good foul, you know, mm -hmm. easy shot, you know, something like that. But you don't want to be found, you know, too far away from the basket at this point because that's really where being in the, in the double bonus is really going to hurt them. And number five, Ayanna Williams makes her first shot. Maybe a little bit of a disagreement from head coach Molly and Light of Camden with the referee. Let's see if she can make her second shot. I believe that's the first coach ever to uh, disagree with a referee. <laughs> <laughs> Brooke, they'll come back down the court fast. Yeah, there it is. She chose not to take the shot. That's a good job, though. That's a, that's a good decision, though. It was. A good decision. Get a better shot. A couple weeks ago, I think she would have taken that three. Yeah. That was a good little pass inside. Yeah, you see was, that? Yeah. <laughs> She's using her size to her yeah. advantage. She's using her quickness. Get underneath the defender, actually, on that one. You know, just threading the needle there to the post, drawing the foul. <laughs> good job. Yeah, you know, two Second guards right now. You know, Blackson Ten. and Velez really doing a, a good job of keeping them in here because they're they are they're, yeah. they're, they have a serious lack of interior presence, and the guards are definitely doing all they can here to you know keep shooting threes penetrating mm -hmm. trying to get to the basket you know getting opportunities just trying to get something on the board here yeah keep crafty themselves inside in this game, passes yeah. and all that yeah. yeah really trying to just keep them in the game here but they're you know if they want to really get back in this thing they have to lock it down on the defensive end and really start to get a little bit you know some easy baskets in the paint mm -hmm. they have to start making all of their free throws yeah three throws are also you know they're shooting probably around 50 percent so that's got to get better too this lead could be cut down a lot if they would have yeah. just buckled down, yeah. taking a breath and made all of them. Almost stolen there. Let's see who was it last out on it. Will remain Brookdale ball. Blues ball. But you've seen on, on not even on not just on Brookdale, but on Camden's side, some sloppy passing here. Yeah, definitely. There. Well, I think you know the defensive intensity is, is kind of causing that too. I'm, I'm on both ends. I think you know it's again There's, as you see yeah. it there, just good ball pressure, really getting up in the you know in the face of the ball handler, you know. Causing a quick reaction and, mm -hmm. you know, maybe not the best decision to throw that one, you know, where, where she did. 
and Kenan, you know, playing the way they're playing, they can get themselves back in this. They're really just going to have to get some, some good looks here, get some baskets, make some shots, make good, easy shots, get themselves back in this game. Trying to find something open. They have their two shooters waiting around the perimeter. They have number 10 wide open in the corner. There was nobody within a couple feet of her. And there's a foul away from the ball, which is, you know, what we talked about, away from the ball, you know, being in the double bonus here, two free throws here. So definitely the way to get yourselves back in this if you're Camden. Just take advantage of these. So number 10 and number 11, Blacks and Velez, while the free throws are being shot over by the sidelines, talking it up with, I believe, assistant coach Jackie Trachimus. Apologize if I'm saying that wrong. Close enough for me. I wasn't even going to try that one. <laughs> And it's slowly starting to get something going here. Chipping away a little yeah, bit. Yeah, chipping lead. away. They're going to have to keep chipping away. Maybe try to get this down to 10 yeah. or so by uh, by halftime. Oh, and oh, another great just... seal there. That's that's a good way to do it right there. That's bad protection there. Yeah, really just, you know, just really loose and looking a little confused. Oh, and then there's a shot in the corner here. Way back. And now offensive rebound. But not a very good possession for Brooke, though. No, not at all. Last couple minutes here have been a little sloppy. Oh, good fake there. Much better shot. Still a good, good look, game. though. Oh, offensive rebound. No. And Brookdale finally grabs it coming down the court. They can Gersh maybe slow it up a little bit. Right, right. Now, if they choose to keep the pace going. And there you go, getting yeah. the shot. A little give and go there by uh, DeGrush and uh, McNellis. Three minutes, a little more than three minutes to go here in the half. Oh. Got to remember Ooh, that yeah. uh, she's five foot tall. You can't yeah. give those big <laughs> passes to her. Yeah. It's a big three minutes. Like we said, you know, you want to try to get it somewhere around 10, you know, before the end of the half here. But it's, you know, it's it's been steadily around that 20 point mark for a few, yeah. for most of the half here. They started to, you know, yeah, kind of. It's a slow start really is what getting them because, you know, they've probably been playing you know, pretty much with them the last seven or eight minutes, but th that first 10 or 12 minutes, really just, you know, a slow start for Camden. Mm -hmm. They came out to a big lead early. Yeah. Ooh. And tripping up on herself there, it looks like. Foul seemed to be called and against the Cougars. Yeah, they'll put him in the bonus, put Brick down the bonus, so they'll shoot the one and one here. Foul's on number 30. Alexandria. So Matt. students, don't forget, with finals approaching and papers due soon, Banker Library on Brookdale's Lincroft campus is offering expanded weekend hours, Sundays from noon until 5 p.m. With the oh, that exception's already over. So the Banker Library is a great place to get work done by yourself or on a group project. Librarians and learning assistants will be available to help with research, writing, or even proofreading of your term papers. For more information, go to brookdalecc.edu and click on the library link at the top of the page. Right. Missed free throw there turns into two points on the other end for Camden. Good job of getting out quickly and transition. Oh, it's going to be a legal screen call. You got to really set the screen. You know, you know, you have to give the defender an opportunity to get around the screen before you start moving. Carlson didn't really do that. Kind of started moving a little early there. Call for the offensive foul. So we have the big presence for the Jersey Blues. Maria Trapp checking back into the game for Jasmine Stanback, who had a couple of struggles here and there with some. Uh, bad ball handling, some uh, maybe miscommunications on defense I, I, I saw as well. Really passing the ball on the outside, really trying to get Brookdale moving there. Good offensive rebound. Oh, and, the and it falls. Good. This last minute and a half or so, much better job by Camden, really getting to the boards, playing you know defense. Yeah, trying to bring it to a, cut it down to a 15-point lead yeah. if they make this. There's still plenty of time here to get it, you know, chip it even more into this lead. And makes it so 35 to 20 now with two minutes, about 20 seconds remaining in the first half. One stop at a time for Camden here. That's what, that's what Coach Late's definitely preaching right now. And another stop. One at a time here. Coach Light's, you know, liking what she's seeing, just getting yeah. the defensive stops, you know, like get you back in this game. Yeah. They're not only getting these big stops with either fouls or yeah. good defensive possessions, they're capitalizing on them as well. Definitely. And this is a big possession here. Got to capitalize here, too. 
tough shot. Yeah, right behind the basket. Yeah, tough That's shot a hard with, one. You know, with 20 plus seconds on the shot clock, probably not the, you know, the shot that Coach Light would like to see. Two minutes remaining in the first half. A lot of ball pressure here by Camden. And the second, mostly oh, second squad from Brookdale is getting it's a little bit beat into up. An yeah, easy there layup, you though. go. You, know, you got to help your teammates out. When you pressure the ball like that, you know you have to rotate as a team on defense in order to cut off the penetration. They didn't do a good job of that, and uh, you know, turned into an easy bucket there for Brookdale. Not afraid to stick her nose in there. Kimberly McNellis gets the basket. Great pass oh, there. Yeah, good job by Trap to get there, but a little, a little back shoulder yeah. pass. Kamari, Tally. Kamari Tally really last couple, you know, getting a couple baskets here, really showing something here for. Coach Light. Getting very physical as well, yeah. very animated yeah. out on the court. She's got to yeah. Yeah. maybe oh, rein it in just a oh, little bit. Bodies on the floor here. I mean, it's it's kind of the, the intensity is kind of picking up here. Ooh, you know, in the early on, it was a, a quick, fast-paced game here. A little bit slower, but, you know, definitely more physical. Yeah. Last, you know, a few minutes of the half here. Trap couldn't grab that one, but Carlson gets the rebound. Couldn't yeah. get it. Trap almost got it. And there's a foul on Brookdale. Again, free throws here. That penalty is really, really giving Camden a chance to get back into this game. And head coach Bob Dubina said yeah. it right. Get aggressive. Yeah. They've, they've lacked a lot of enthusiasm yeah. in these Early last on, couple you know, the energy, we said the energy coming out was good. It yeah. jumped out to a big lead. But since then, really just looking just sloppy. You know, just maybe the energy was, <laughs> they exuded too much energy in the beginning of the game. Yeah. Got about a minute remaining here in this first quarter Brown of play. Checks in for the Cougars. So yeah. the full court pressure here. Yeah, you heard the call from the yeah, sidelines. Why, why not? They're getting turnovers or getting stops. Maybe make uh, Brookdale have a couple of mistakes or. Uh, and they they made a mistake themselves. Trap did a good job flashing through the lane right there. You know, get get the ball, yeah. create some pressure on the defense, you know, draw on the foul. They're really what Brookdale needs is just slow this down, get a couple, you know, free throws here. So set three. themselves down a little bit. A couple of players looking Second to check personal. in for Camden. Number 11, Kathleen Velez, and we'll see the first action of number 35, Velez Jadara Richardson. Richardson. Check in for the Cougars. Basically, almost looking eye to eye with Carlson. Carlson's got a couple inches on her, it looks like. And Trap grabs the rebound. I'm sorry, grabs the the free throw. <laughs> Luke, you know, a lot of substitutions here by both coaches in the last couple yeah. of minutes here. Really trying to match up. You know, get, both teams want to finish a strong half because, you know, especially Brookdale looking a little bit sloppier the last few minutes. You really want to finish the half strong. Passing around again, trying to find something open. Nothing, nothing down low though. Everything is around the perimeter. Well, good but there's a good look there. there. Oh, in and out. Yeah. Oh, good offensive rebound. And look yeah, at that. Scrappy. DeGroo, or was that DeGroo? McNellis. McNellis. Five foot yeah. McNellis taking the ball away from the five foot Brown. ten Check Richardson. So you gotta love the effort there. She's got some heart in her, you can't doubt that. Got about 30 seconds and ticking on oh, the clock. Great pass there. Inside to Carlson, grabbing so the easy good. bucket. That's what you want to yeah, see. That's exactly the way to break the press. You push the ball a little bit, find the open man on the, on the wing. Oh, and a great steal oh, there. Oh, there you go. Uh, McNell is coming back down the court. Loses the ball a little bit out to DeGrouche. Good pass. Oh, good defense, though. Way to get back. Couldn't get it into Lukey enough. Traveling. Blues ball. Got about nine seconds remaining here. Score Brookdale 40 and Camden 23. Oh, Maybe job. trying to gotta get a watch last the second inbounder. three. And she grabs it. Got to watch the inbounder. She, she inbounded the ball, came off a couple screens, knocked it down. McNell is grabbing that final three-point shot there to bring the score 43 to 23. They, they were down. They, they, uh, I'm sorry, Camden brought the lead down to about 15. Yeah, they made a good right run. They made up. a really good run, played a lot of good defense, got a lot of turnovers from Brookdale. Really, we thought maybe they would turn around at the end of the half. And, you know, in the last minute and a half or two, 
really kind of just resorted back to sloppy ball handling, yeah. you know, a couple bad shots, and Brooke Dale took advantage, got the, you know, beat the press, got the good looks inside. And in that, that big stretch you saw where Brookdale was struggling a little bit, there was a lot of their second teamers in. Yeah. Um, what do you think is going to, you know, be going on in the locker room when, when they're heading in there? Well, you know, I, I think Coach Sabina is really emphasizing to his second unit especially, you know, you got to play better defense and you got to take better shots. They were getting good shots at the first unit. The second unit came in and, and, you know, we've seen the second unit do really well. Maybe, you know, the fact that uh, Jasmine Palmer in that starting unit yeah. may have affected, you know, the, the chemistry of that second, you know, second unit. You know, the bench really needs to maybe play together a little bit better. All right, so we will uh, join us after the commercial break. We will be having an interview with our very own Paxton Reddington. So stick around in a couple of minutes. We will be back. Brookdale 43 and Camden 23 at the half. Planning a large-scale event or conference? Consider Brookdale Community College and its versatile Collins Arena. The Collins Arena is the premier venue for all kinds of corporate and community events. Live concerts and celebrity happenings, trade shows and expositions, sporting events and tournaments. The Collins Arena has countless layout options to meet your needs. Bring your next event to life at the Collins Arena at Brookdale Community College. Go to brookdalecc.edu slash events and start planning your next event now. I choose to coach national champions. We've had some great success. The program, it's produced, I think, some great student athletes. We've been successful on the court, and we've also been very successful off the court. I'm Paul Chizak, head basketball coach of the Jersey Blues national champions. Success, success starts at Brookdale. It's great waking up every day, coming to a job I love, and seeing, like, getting an immediate response from people who probably wouldn't have got that without my start at Brookdale. The Culinary Education Center at Brookdale was great to me because it taught me the basic skills I needed to pursue a career in the industry that I love, which eventually led to me opening my own restaurant. Each year we've continued to grow, added staff members, I'm proud to say all of which are either graduates or students of Brookdale's Culinary Education Center. I've also been fortunate enough to be nominated twice for a James Beard Award, the Best Chef Mid-Atlantic. Brookdale's easy. It's accessible. It's right in your own backyard. Courses are, course times are all varied. You can always fit it in your schedule. You have no reason not to go. My name's Andrew Aranio, owner of Drew's Bay Shore Bistro in Keyport, and I got my start at Brookdale. I choose to be a winner on and off the court. Brookdale helped me achieve my success by putting the right people around me. The athletic department is one of the best, giving us mentors off the court, being able to succeed in the classroom, getting on the dean's list, and then to be able to win the national championship. I'm Neil Thompson, Jersey Blues national champion. Success starts at Brookdale. Robert J. Collins Arena, located on the south side of the Lincroft campus. The Collins Arena is a multi-purpose venue that is used for several campus and community events. Numerous layout options allow the arena to accommodate a variety of special events, including live concerts, intense mixed martial arts and kickboxing tournaments, high-flying cheerleading competitions, the well-designed Jersey Shore Home Show, and the Shore Conference Basketball Tournament for all the sports fanatics looking for an unforgettable game day experience. Don't wait. Grab your tickets today and join us in the Robert J. Collins Arena, where every event is a special event. Learn more about our upcoming events today. Call us at 732-224-1867. For more information, find us at brookdalecc.edu slash events.
everybody for joining us back here. We have our very own Pax and Reddington for a quick interview. Uh, very nice to have you over here. So, Lady's been on a seven game win streak since dropping the first two. So, what's the mood like in the locker room? It's very intense. Like, we're all working together. So, we're playing like extremely well together. I do the, uh, the sports reports of the radio as well. I saw that you were named player of the week. So, congratulations on that. What's that feel? Thank you. It feels really good. It just shows that hard work pays off. Our key, uh, team is currently ranked ninth in the country. So, that's very big. What are you guys feeling about that? We're just like feeling it as like a chip on our shoulder. We have stuff to show them because we want to keep moving up and everything. Very good. All right. Well, thank you for joining us and get you back to the locker room there. So thank you for joining us. Come back for the second half of action. Still with a 20 point lead. Hi, and welcome to Brookdale Newsmakers, your source for what's happening on our campus and in your community. I'm Darren D'Amato, and joining us today is Zach Eisenberg, Vice President of PTK. Zach, thank you for coming here. It's a pleasure to be here, Darren. Thanks for having me. And what does PTK stand for? Uh, Phi Theta Kappa. That's the aggregate society of what we're constituents of. Okay, and uh, what are you constituents of? Uh, the Honor Society. Um, that's the federal whole society that we are representatives of, and our chapter particularly at Brookdale is Alpha Pi Theta. Okay, and I understand that you have embarked upon a new initiative as part of PTK? Yes, it is. Um, C4, it's short for Community College Completion Corps. Um, that's the initiative that they have taken as a whole, PTK, and Alpha Pi Theta is doing things in particular throughout this year specifically um, to carry that out and promote it. Okay, and uh, why is it so important for students to get their associate's degree? Well, advo as advocates of the Honor Society, um, we want to promote how you receive your certificate and how imperative that is before you matric matriculate onto a four-year institution. There are articulation agreements uh, with four-year schools, um, but that's, that's not enough because there are students that are taking, you know, circumventing the whole process and leaving after one year, and we want to strive to show how important it is that you uh, utilize to its fullest capacity what Brookdale and other community colleges have to offer. Okay, and what happens when a student is uh, circumventing Brookdale? Um, well, the thing is, is that after two years, um, sometimes three, 20% mm -hmm. uh, of students actually do not complete all of their credentials um, before that three-year or two-year framework. Um, so what happens is when they apply to a four-year institution for any sort of jobs, um, they, are, they don't have the full accolades that they could have. The transfer process becomes a little intricate um, as far as the, cre the credits taken. If you have your associate's degree, it's a little easier. It facilitates that process of how many credits they take. Um, and more importantly, uh, it's a financially sound de decision how you can go on to a four-year school. Um, and they compensate for that uh, pretty generously. Okay, so there are some economical ramifications if a student were to not matriculate here at Brookdale? Correct, um, and even on the toolkit on the community college site, that's uh, ccompletioncore.com, the community college completion core. Um, it states facts, uh, it's not just rhetoric, it goes into long-term effects as well. Um, you can, you typically, the student on average receives $8,000 more a year um, if they do complete their associate's degree, um, 400000 in a lifetime, so that's a significant amount as well. Um, so vis-a-vis -vis, you know, getting a job um, and keeping that job as well, it's, it's, pretty uh, it's pretty important. And unemployment has actually decreased on average 30% um, when a student does receive their associate's degree and goes on to, a, to receive a job afterwards. Okay, so uh, what are some of the initiatives that you've embarked upon as part of the C4 initiative? Well, so far this year, um, we've... We've taken a dichotomous approach with executives from the school, such as Dr. Murphy, our president, and um, um, other, other individuals as well. We have signs in our library, that's a bank year library, and other parts of campus, such as Larison Hall, where the majority of English classes are as well. Um, that's pretty, op those are optimal demographics we want to reach out to, because most kids are in the library, whether they're studying or not. Um, we have displays, they sign banners, just to show that they advocate and support. They want to promote this program to show that they are willing to get their certificate first and testament to graduating and going on to a four-year school or a vocational job or anything that they're interested in. Um, that's, where, that's pretty much where our support lies in other students. Um, we are students taking the initiative to entice them to join, uh, and, and the most influential people are fellow peers and students, and that's why we want to take this road. Um, it's, it's not, professors can do a significant job um, considerably when it comes to impacting their students in the classroom, but the most important people that can influence others is your, is your fellow students that are juxtaposed next to you in each class. 
Okay, thank you, Zach, and we're very fortuitous to have you have joined us today. Thank you for joining us on Brookdale Newsmakers. Our guest today was Zach Eisenberg. For more information, visit brookdalecc.edu or check us out on Facebook. I'm Darren D'Amato, and see you next time here on Brookdale Newsmakers. I get to make people's dreams a reality and help them protect their most valuable assets. Every day, I get to give your dreams a chance. I get to provide the best healthcare experience for our patients. the opportunity to be creative in all areas of the performing arts. I got my start at Brookdale. 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 time here we would like to take a minute to remind you of the importance of good sportsmanship the national junior college athletic association is committed to the ideals of good sportsmanship safety and fair play we ask all fans coaches and players to show respect for the opposing team game officials and each other before during and after today's game persons throwing objects or participating in other acts in conflict with good sportsmanship, safety, and fair play, are subject to ejection and prosecution. Your cooperation is greatly appreciated. We are all leaders. Thank you. Let's go, Blue!
All right, everybody, thank you for joining us back here for the second half of action. Uh, score right now, Brookdale 43 and Camden Cougars 23. So, Sean, what do you think the, uh, the keys to the second half are for Brookdale to keep this lead? I think Brookdale needs to play uh, a much more sound game as far as not turning the ball over as much, uh, keeping possessions, you know, valuing your possessions, trying to get those easy baskets. And, you know, as for Camden, just really they close out the, the half pretty well. They did a pretty good job of scoring towards the end, but they really, have, you know, on the defensive end as well for them, really got to shut it down. As we saw a lot uh, towards the the middle and the end of that that first half was um, a lot of the second teamers. Yeah. So maybe we'll see a little bit of more of you know we have the, the starting crew out right now. Um, Pax Reddington, who you just did the, the quick interview with, uh, Maria Trapp. You have Bowler over there. Seems something going on on the sideline over here. There we go. Getting back into action now. Ball back over, and there she is, Velez. Big three right off the bat. Yeah, way to start the half for them. It's a big shot for them to start the half, get some confidence going. And now they need to you know, buckle down on the defensive end here. Number 11, Kathleen Velez coming out strong early. So this, this Camden team had a tough time defending the, the first team Brookdale squad. Um, we'll see if Trapp can be the big inside presence that she was. And there she is with a quick bucket inside. Good move. Uses the drop step to her advantage, goes around the smaller defender, goes right over the top of her. Did a great job there. So Brookdale trying to stop them from cutting into the lead like they did for a little bit. The second team did bring it back towards the end. Oh, there you go. Good block there. Samantha Carlson. Good pass by Bowler. Trap couldn't grab it to go inside. Visibly frustrated there, as well as head coach Bob Dubina. Couple, a uh, couple of easy ones that Trap should have made in the game. Good rebound there by Reddington, grabbing the outside ball over to Bowler. Looked like it might have been intended for Carlson, but Trap got it. At least somebody in the white jersey got it. Couldn't get it to go in. Trap looking a little bit frustrated here to start the second half, missing a couple shots that she, she thinks she probably should have made. You don't never want to get mentally down on yourself. No, that could be not. the worst thing. And there on the defensive end, a little bit of a lapse there. Yeah, she's got to yeah. really kind of take a step back for a second. You can see she is, is visibly uh, shaken a little bit. I think it's going to be up to her teammates maybe to get her an easy bucket here to just calm her down a little bit, get her back into the flow of the game here. That tough pass there, yep. deflected. Inside there. Couldn't a lot of contact, a couple yeah. bites on the floor, but you know, I think it was a good no call there by the official. No whistle. And a quick start here, cutting into the lead here for Camden. So good idea by head coach Bob Dubin, I believe. I, yeah, I'm, I'm a firm believer in, in take a timeout when it's when it's getting yeah. a little ugly, especially when you have a lead and, and then the other team starts coming back and chipping yeah. at it. So, uh, you know, good yeah, you never there. want that. Everybody, you can't watch BTV all the time. So when you're in your car, don't forget to tune into Brookdale Public Radio, 90.5 tonight. You're home for great local music, lots of cool classic rock cuts you don't hear on the radio anymore, and new stuff that no one else is playing, all commercial free. So for the latest news, weather, and traffic, check out Brookdale Public Radio, 90.5 tonight. Great station. And you can hear me, too. I'm uh, on there sometimes. Me, too, yeah. You can check out the, uh, we have a, it's an HD radio, so you can check online. They have a student radio run by the students. Uh, I have a show as well as Sean. Mine is Wednesdays at 3, yours is Wednesdays at 5, Wednesdays correct? At five. Yeah, so, five. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes we catch each other in the studio. We do, yeah. Yeah, yeah we do. So, uh, tune in there. It's, a, it's all sports show, so, you know, you're tuning in this, you love Wednesdays, sports. Wednesday's a big day for sports. Absolutely. Mine's all about football. His yeah. incorporates every, a little, uh, little bit of everything. A little yeah. bit of everything. So, intentional. You guys got a name? Yeah, the Boim Show. The Boim Show. Okay, yeah. mine's intentional grinding. So definitely uh, tune into those if you want to hear the the latest updates on all your favorite sports. So you got Lauren Bowler, the inbound pass, and you got big pressure there from Camden. Uh, they saw job, it worked though. out Full from court early. Pressure. Good yeah. effort by Reddington into Carlson. These easy shots. Oh, in and out. Oh man, that was that's tough. It's tough. I mean, that's just you make the right play, the ball just doesn't bounce for you sometimes. You know what? Though? Yeah. And Sometimes, you know, but the basketball gods have a way of evening it out. So yeah. maybe one that shouldn't go in later, exactly. maybe, maybe it'll go in, and I think it'll be all right. You can't but even yeah. get mad as you that as a coach. You can't get mad. You make yeah. the right play. You know, your, your team, you know, you, you hustle. You, you follow your teammate. Mm -hmm. and, you know, there's nothing you can do. The ball just couldn't go down. 
lot of energy here in the arena. Yeah. Our cheerleaders joining us for the second half. Outside to Palma, hesitation, and walking like foul. Yeah, looks yeah. she got bumped a little bit. Yeah. So three minutes in, that's the first foul by either team, so a much better job already yeah. by both teams trying to stay yeah. out of foul trouble here. At this point, we were about two apiece or three apiece in in the uh, the first half. Oh, oh quick great. inbound. Again, a missed easy shot, trap though, cleans it up, Finally, and that's gonna, yeah. maybe that'll get her going. <clears throat> Sometimes that's all you need. You get one of those ones I mean, and you just she take knows, a breath. She knows based on the first half, she, you know, she's able to dominate a little bit mm -hmm. in this game. So if she can keep her head you know, on her shoulders a little bit straight, she's going to have a good chance of dominating the second half as well. Bowler was just about a hand length away from swatting that. Three ball couldn't go for number 11. The rebound by Trap. Kathleen Velez. Called for a travel. And you saw there. Yeah, uh, I, mean, she, I mean, you know, it, maybe it looked worse than it was. I think she's she, she's not falling apart, but she's having a tough yeah. time. It really just I'm more mad at herself than anything else for just, you know, causing the turnover. Oh, pass right there to Carlson. She didn't know what to do with it. She wasn't expecting to get that. Oh, tough pass by Palmer. Yeah, couldn't get it to go. Right idea, just, you know, didn't execute it. So, so a bit of a sloppy uh, start here to the yeah, second half. Yeah, you know, it was, it was a 20-point lead, now down to 16. Brookdale up 47 to 31. So Camden made some very good adjustments uh, around mid to late in the first half. Yeah, cut it down to about 15 or so. Yeah, carrying it into the, into the second half of play here. You saw a lot of physical play by number 22, Kamari uh, Tally. Tally. Job by Trap there. There you go. She's starting to get back into it after missing the first couple. Yeah. And again, you see she's getting these easy, you know, she's hustling down the court. She's getting easy looks, you know, just beating the defenders you know, to the spot. That's really yep. what it is. A lot Big of shot, outside yeah. shots. Just like, you know, it's amazing. They're just starting the second half a lot like they started the first half with a lot of outside shots. Very good awareness there by, oh, by Jasmine Good job Palma. by Carlson to follow that shot. Yeah, that was a good play there. Palma yeah. knew that she had somebody right behind her. Quick pass to Reddington. And great job by Carlson and, picking up the pieces. And again, Brookdale kind of, you know, enduring the run. Just kind of settling down, building the lead back up, keeping it around that 20 points. And look, Brookdale doesn't, doesn't have to do anything special here. They need to play the rest of this game yep. even. You know, worst case, maybe a little bit, you know, just stay with Camden. I mean, at this point, you know, you use your 20-point lead to your advantage. You kind of just try to keep it even. Absolutely, yeah. So we would also like to recognize. Oh, well, we'll let the cheerleaders do the thing for a second. And there we go. Great job there by the girls. The recognized Domino's Pizza of Red Bank. Proud to support the Brookdale men's and women's basketball teams this season, as well as our BTV crew giving us some, some good food at halftime. Domino's is located at 60 English Plaza in downtown Red Bank. You can place your order online at dominoes.com. Very easy nowadays. You have to call yeah. up. Now oh, you can just yeah. go online. You got apps for it. And they save your, they save your information. Oh, it's so great. after the first time, you, it's two minutes to order a yep. pizza. It's great. Two clicks, and it's at your yeah. door. I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but <laughs> it's definitely easy, that's for sure. So heading back out to the court here. Brookdale brought it back up to that 20-point lead, 51 to 31. It's uh, It's been a lot of back and forth with Camden will get on a little bit of a run. Brookdale will stop them and yeah. get on a run of their own. It's, so It's going to be tough for Camden. You know, you're you're going to have to be 20 points better than Brookdale yeah. the rest of the way. It's going to be a tough, you know, but, you know, the way to do it is get easy baskets and play good defense. And it's a good start here to get uh, to the free throw line here. I think a lot of Brookdale's success has come from getting up early. Definitely, definitely. And then being able to use their second second unit to give the first unit a little bit of a rest. Yeah. And the second unit has been, has played well today. You know, sloppy at parts, you know, mm -hmm. different, different, maybe a little bit of mixing and matching yeah. by Coach Tabina, but overall doing a pretty good job here, you know, still mm -hmm. with maintaining the lead. Yeah, normally the second, the second squad can come in and, and play very well yeah. in place of the first team. Um, like you said, a little sloppy, a little troubles here, but uh, they got a whole second half to make up for that. But they're really, you know, but Coach Tabina really is using his bench a lot, get, you know, get, you know, just shuffling the girls around a little bit, yeah. get, finding different, you know, teams that work together well. Mm -hmm. And it's a smart, you know, you, you got, you got the lead, why not try yeah. a couple things? Yeah, why not keep everybody rested? Just in case for some reason it does get a little bit closer. Yep. You have your starters, you know, fresh towards the end of the game. I mean, we're, we're still looking at a decent amount of the season left. Yeah. Um, they got Camden at Atlanta Cape, Sussex. I mean, I can go down the whole list here. We'll be here for a couple minutes, but, you know, you don't want to tire anybody out, you know, mid-season. 
Yeah, if that would have counted, that would have been, yeah. that been pretty. Yeah. And second nice little move inside by Bowler. I, I, you know what? I, I think it was a, a little bit closer to maybe counting than people might realize. Yeah. She, her first step, she got fouled on the first step, but, you know, it was questionable maybe that her first step was, you know, the foul caused her to, you know, lose her, her balance there, but she kind of well, finished there. But look again, at trap that. here. Number 22, Kimberly Pinell is doing her best Peyton Manning impression with the back shoulder pass there to Trap. Trap really using her size to her advantage here. Oh, Tough good block inside. by yeah, Wow, that was a risky inside pass, but it got there to number 23, Taisha Brooks. Carlson doing a good job blocking a lot of shots here tonight. She is a force to be reckoned with down in the paint for the Jersey Blues. Trap with the turnaround didn't oh. ooh. didn't take a second to register everything. Brookdale grabbing it back, and they do. Bowler well, speeding down really the court. Just, just going right through the defense. Oh, great look there. And McNeil's uh, couldn't get it to fall. Trap again. Reddington couldn't get oh. it. Trap try number two. Good job Over there to McNellis. Good time out there by Coach uh, Dubina. Got to love the hustle there. Yeah, no, just, that, was, know, that was great. Four girls around the ball, just yeah. really just diving after it, trying to get a hand on it. I mean, you may keep not it have, alive. Yeah, you may not have gotten it, but yeah. you know, you, you can't doubt the effort. Yeah. That was a great job. And it, it becomes contagious. You know, one person hits the floor, inspires the rest of the team in order to really want, really want to go after the ball there. Yeah. So we're we're doing big things at Brookdale here. Uh, we'd like to give a big congrats. It was a little while ago, but we'll still congratulate them. The Brookdale women's soccer team for becoming the NJCAA Division III National Champions. They beat them in early November. Uh, Mohawk Valley Community College is a 4-3 to three victory over the Hawks. So Chelsea James, Amanda Anastasia, and our very own Lauren Bowler were named to the tournament all-tournament uh, all team. Carolyn Dewar was MVP of the tournament, while Aaron Kinnerman was named defensive player of the tournament. And the head coach, Katie Miller, received coach of the tournament. So first national championship for Brookdale women's soccer and the fifth national championship for our sports program here. Big congratulations to our ladies over at the soccer team. And good little look in there by McNellis. Quick inside move, wow. Laxon's really been, been good getting to the basket. Yeah. And the ref just throwing his hands up at that one. Oh. Uh, physical Carlson couldn't pull that one in. Number 22, Tally had the, the angle on her. Camden being aggressive, going to the basket. Yeah. So we're still at the... That 20-point lead that Camden just see, can't seem to, to cut they into just, for too what long. It is, they just can't seem to get, you know, a bunch of stops. You know, yeah. they're getting a stop, come mm -hmm. back down, and, you know, the next position, Brookdale is able to find a way to, you know, get a basket. They really have to put three, four, five stops together, really cut into this lead significantly. Yeah, they can't, they can't get on a good run. Yeah. You, can't, you can't go back and forth exchanging baskets. There's no way you can cut into a lead like that. Yeah. You're going to have to have, a, you know, a couple, a couple spurts where you stop them four or five times in a row. So we have the Groose checking back in for Reddington. She's been she's been a little quiet today. A couple early on, and yeah. then ever since then. Hey. Well, much of the offense really provided by Trap today. Yeah, yeah, she's been a she's been a presence on the inside. There's no doubt about that. And putting that full court on him. That was that was five foot guard versus five foot guard right there. So foul called on number 10, Blackson. Over to DeGroosh, see if she can get it past the half court line. Good job by Velez, really keeping the pressure on. Oh, yep. knocked the ball oh. loose, there it comes. Here right she goes. Legs. She's got time, maybe more than she thinks. Good job, though. She, good job of controlling that. Yep. And this. If they, can, if they can use this press to their advantage, really get you know get those stops I was talking about. Get a yep. few stops in a row. A good pass there. Yeah, what a, good job of getting out of the press there. And number 22, who has uh, Kamari Tiley, who has been physical, getting called on that one. Well, you know, she's given up a few inches to Carlson, but you know definitely getting a little physical with her, really making her yeah. earn any any look she gets. Good oh. defense there. They've got numbers if they push it here. Good pass. Great pass. And 
and one there. So Kamari Tali, I believe. Kamari Tali, yes, will get up to the, the stripe to try to grab the third point on the foul. And a, and a good job running the break there. Higgs just really made a great pass to, to Tally to get the ball, run into the basket, just an easy finish for her. And she's been she's been good, you know, the end of the first half, yeah. here into the beginning of the second half, she's been playing a lot better. She was kind of, we didn't really say her name at all in the first uh, part of this game, but really contributing a lot more now. Just a little bit of confusion there on who's going to take the ball. Brookdale worked it out, coming down the court with some Offense ferocity. Travel. And again, now Camden's getting these stops in a row here. Yeah. Really, you know, chance, you know, the three-pointer to cut it to 10, 10 points here. So exactly Polar what we talked about out, earlier. Yeah. Just get, you know, a bunch of stops in a row. Yep. You know, you get it to 10. You play with them for a couple minutes, and you get a couple more stops in a row. You really just got to, you know, ex you know, use your defense to your advantage here. I believe they're on about a 7 to nothing run right now. Well, it was a costly turnover there, though. Yeah. And that could possibly get back on stop defense. it. They've got Carlson down low. Uh -huh. but, oh, but good job, it. though. Patience. Nice patience by DeGruche. Very good draw on the foul there. You know, she had Carlson, you know, going to the basket, but it was probably a little bit of a tough pass. We have to get it all over all yeah. the defenders. So a good job of being patient and just taking that ball inside. We'll see if she can stop this run that the Cougars had going, and she does. So Much needed free throw there. Clotting the wound a little bit. She can make the second. That'll. Couldn't get that one to fall. Again, Tally with the rebound there. Very active in the second half here. Yeah, you saw you saw her late in the first half as well, and she's bringing that energy right into the oh, second half. Good defensive play there. Very good job. Off of DeGruche right into the hands of Trap. Down to the Great wide open Carlson. Oh, she traveled. A uh, little bit too anxious. She hesitated. You know, she probably could have had the lane. I think Coach Abina is kind of telling her that right now. Yeah. You know, Take that ball, take the two steps. You get, you're get. allowed two steps, use them. Mm -hmm. Go to the basket and finish strong there. But a little bit of indecision there, really cost the possession there. Yeah, sometimes you get a, you hesitate a little bit and they can, they can bite you. Yeah. Back over to Velez. They're really looking for that outside shot. And she was there it is. There it is. Tally active again on the offensive boards. Yeah, maintaining she, possession for them. And she's really been a spark for them, really helping them cut to this lead here. She's a very, very physical player on the inside, hard to grab the ball away from her. I believe even I, I saw a little bit of an exchange between her and Carlson that she had a tough time getting away from her. Not a matchup you want to see there, yeah. but she gets away from it. Looking inside for Trap. She's got a bit of a matchup there. Good move. And there you go, Trap. Really good move Coming there. Coming back in from really the early struggles. Yeah, using her size to her advantage in that matchup. Like you said, Tally was a little bit, you know, back on defense trying to yeah. stop the ball. Didn't get down low to, you know, defend Trap. And good rebound there. And we'll give Trap the credit on that because she really is the one that fought hard for yeah. it. Yeah. Just so happened to fall into uh, McNellis' hands. And again, they're looking for Trap down low. And travel there. Again, maybe Coach Sabina, I think, telling his girls to maybe get that ball down low quickly to trap before the defense has a chance to recognize the mismatch. Yeah, so timeout called by Camden. Uh, don't forget, everybody, Friday, December 20th, the gold medal MMA over at the Brookdale Recreations and Event Center will light up the main cage once again for another series of caged MMA bouts. The Breck plays host to some serious in-your-face action on Friday, December 20th. Doors open at 6 p.m. and bouts begin at 7, so get there early. For any ticket information, call the Arena Box Office at 732-224-2070. And Pat, as we have about 11 minutes and 37 seconds to go here, Camden, you know, really did a good job of cutting into the lead. Yeah. Ha you know, had the ball down 15, 13, with a chance to cut it, you know, even closer. You know, a cost to turn over there, kind of, you know, tilted the scales back Brookdale's way. So this is a very important stretch for them to really get, you know, get back into this game here. It is, yeah. It's not know. out of reach. No, I mean, they, they were at, it was 55, 35, not that long ago. Yeah. Brookdale only scoring three points. Um, I mean, they, they've stopped 
Uh, I'm sorry, Camden. Is, they've stopped yeah. Camden in the last yeah. minute or so, yeah. not scoring any points, but they got to start to bring this lead back up yeah. again. Headed back out to yeah. the court Coach with the same staying, squad. Staying with, with uh, Carlson and Trapp both in the game for this pretty much the majority of this second half. I don't think they've come out of the game maybe for a minute or two each. But. Yeah. So he's really using his size to his advantage uh -huh. here. You know, it's paying off for them. They're getting easy baskets inside, mismatches on the defensive end. They're blocking shots, getting mm -hmm. rebounds. They have uh, Sanslo, Nadia Sanslo in there as well, 5'7", matching up against Kamari Talley. Yeah, and then a little bit smaller of a backcourt to match up with the small backcourt of Camden. So yeah. pretty good uh, coaching decision there. It's been paying off for, for Coach Davina pretty pretty well today. I think he likes this group that he's got in right now. Yeah, They've been do they haven't been doing yeah, that bad. Yeah, defensively, they're, you know, it's probably the best matchup they can, they can hope for mm -hmm. defensively. So, uh, playing a game of catch here. We'll see if they can get a shot. Oh, big three there. You can't, you can't even give her an inch. Yeah. Number 10, Siani Blackson. She takes any opportunity she gets, and she's a quick shot, so you really got to stay on her. Let's see where they go to offense. You know, without Bowler in the game, you know, really creating offense has been a little bit difficult for, for Brookdale. Bowler, you know, the point is really their point guard, their creator on offense, you know, gets the ball down low to their scores, so... Having a little bit of trouble without her in the game right now. Palma kind of plays the same role yeah. in effect, too. So really, you know, this maybe the defensive lineup they have in, they may be struggling a little bit on the offensive end, but Coach Davina likes it for the defense. So hopefully hopefully they can find something on offense here. Passing. Wide open lane there, no help yeah, at all. That was, oh. I was a little confused for a yeah. second. I thought we were flip sides of the court. There was nobody down there in the paint for Camden. So number five, Ayanna Williams has been a little bit quiet in this second half. Uh, she had a, a couple baskets, a couple uh, name called a couple times in the first half. Coming out of the game, checking in is number three, Noel Higgs. They call an offensive foul, a legal screen. Oh, Coach, Coach Light, Light yeah. not, not liking it at all. I don't know if the microphones on the court can pick that one up. <laughs> Terrible call in her opinion. Sticking with that full court press, going the length of the court, baseline to baseline. She uh, held up a little bit towards the end there. Good defense. Yeah, that was a tough pass. Yeah. Shouldn't have made Again, that the one. The physicality of Tally really, really paying off here. Good job finding the shooter in the corner. Offensive rebound is big there. She's good for number 10. She's good from the top. I don't know about the sides. Oh, good finish there by Matthews. And quickly, quickly cutting into this lead. So Paxton Reddington quickly running over to the scorer's table. Let's see who she may come in place of. Ooh, oh, almost stolen. Ooh. Oh, good job passing that ball there. That's one you got to yeah, make on if you're good looking. You got to appreciate McNellis. They're making the right right play there, passing yeah. to her teammate. You had the opportunity. Oh, Velez going through the. Oh, good job by Trap. Oh. Stop that. She jumped at the wrong Access time. Access denied yeah. by Trap there. Just definitely just stepping up in a big moment, really blocking that shot because that would have cut to 11. So DeGrush comes out, gets a breather. Been playing, I believe, the length of the yeah. second half. Reddington's coming in there, definitely, you know, get them off offensively sparked a little bit there. Oh, and a good job on defense there. Yeah. Immediately coming in with the pressure. It's a huge possession here. Yeah. Big time possession here for Camden to get themselves back in this. I mean, they're kind of back in it already. Really, would really put some pressure on Bertel if they can get a basket here. Oh, oh, oh. bad pass yeah, there. It's a tough decision there. So, two big defensive possessions yeah. immediately for Paxton Reddington. And we got a whistle blown. I think an injury there. That's the second time. Oh, she slipped before, and it looks like she might have slipped again. <clears throat> Let's see if she's. She seems yeah. to be walking it off. Yep. No limp, just uh, no, she's not even gonna come out of the game. I think she's just maybe uh, may have strained something. Seems to be all right. You could take advantage of it here if you're Kimberly McNellis getting a step on her inside oh, to trap. Move by yeah, trap. Wide open lane, and she took good advantage decision to take of that. It. Yeah, and she's been their go to, you know, the whole game when they're struggling to get baskets, they find her inside, they get her yep. the easy baskets. And and she's, that, been and that's, yeah. she's been the difference in this game. That's a big thing with Brookdale. You see, you either got, you know, you have Reddington one game taking the taking the exactly. helm, you've seen Bowler, you've seen Carlson. Trapp, so Carlson, yeah. Palma. You I mean, can, just you can get that one yeah. player, yep. yeah. While well, the rest of the team is doing the well. It yeah. speaks to the depth of this team. Mm -hmm. 
It's nothing against the rest of the team, but yeah. you have that one player who can come in and just kind of shine. Get you out of the tough situations here and there. And just when you think Camden's going to get themselves really, you know, really close in this game, that Brookdale steps up with a couple big defensive stops. Yep. Getting, getting the basket, just extending the lead. You know, right now, the, you know, time is on their side. They really just got to play sound basketball the rest of the way here. Good possessions, good defensive, you know, pressure. Trap again, right through the lane. There she goes. Yeah, no help at all. After the early struggles in this second half, yeah, she has shined. Yeah. And again, the easy basket's really getting her confidence back. You know, she's taking the ball, taking a couple dribbles right to the hoop. Yep. So we'll see. Uh, they're trying to set up another oh, three opportunity. Time. Yeah, you saw it the whole way. She was looking at that rim. Oh, that's a good shot there. Nobody in front of her uh, couldn't get it to land. Tally with the offensive rebound again, draws a foul. A lot of minutes here for Carlson, and Trap for that matter. Yeah. I don't think they've come out the second half. No. Just don't forget everybody, stick around. Uh, you know, grab a little bite to eat, maybe order up some dominoes after this game, because we will have the, the men's game coming up next. They will be facing off against Cumberland, um, not Camden. The Cumberland game for the women's was the one that got postponed on Tuesday, trying to find another date to to go through with that. So it uh, would be a very good matchup. We got the men still undefeated and Cumberland six and one. So, you know, definitely stick around for that. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a great game. Oh, good ball pressure there. Uh, uh, good job though. Yeah. Really good job at McNellis to just compose herself. Uh huh. And Reddington again, a good job helping her teammate. Again, she had Reddington. Sanslow out in yeah. the corner. Decided to go in, but it did pay off, yeah, so. Drawing the foul. Yep. Making the right play. That's what she's in there for. She's in there, you know, to calm them down on the offensive end and just, you know, smart, good, easy baskets, mm -hmm. make good plays. And there goes the first one. She's got a great shot, so putting a little bit more uh, cushion on the backcourt. Head coach Bob Dubina. Makes her second. A little bit of an interesting free throw strategy there, a little bit of a jump shot on yeah. that free throw. But it works. It does. Not as bold as the Jackie Moon uh, granny yeah, yeah. shot, but um, <laughs> still pays off. You know, that, that might have been all right in the 70s, but these <laughs> days you, you, your teammates won't let you do that anymore, <laughs> I don't think. So they grabbed the tough basket there, the Camden Cougars. Just hanging around that 15-point yeah. mark pretty much the whole second half here. They cut it down to about 12 or 12, 13, 13, I think. I think yeah, was 13, as close as they yeah. got with the ball, but just couldn't figure it out how to get, you know, how to just cut it a little bit more. Trap underneath, doing a good job. She's having a big game. She is, yeah. Already coming into this game, I believe, averaging 10.9 points per game. Yeah, definitely well got, above that. Had that in the first yeah. half. Well above that. She's been, you know, the difference in this game. Really just no answer on the other end for them. For Camden, just couldn't. Defensively, can't stop her. And then it, Trap on the defensive end has been blocking shots and, you know, altering shots. Yeah. So bringing in the uh, the tallest player on the squad, number 30, Alexandra Matthews for the Cougars. And we have Palma coming back in for the Jersey Blues. And again, chose to be the substituting, but leaving Trap uh, and Carlson both on the floor. Yeah. Carlson's been logging a lot of minutes here yeah. in this game, especially in the second half. See if she can grab this other free throw. Just Ooh. out, but there you go. Palma gets the rebound, uh -huh. tries to feed it in, and didn't get a good hand on the ball. I'll tell you what, number 10, Sienna Black's been throwing her body yeah. around. She's been very active today. Yeah. And not just only from the perimeter where she's heaving up those threes and making a good percentage Here's of them. Here's a good look for uh, her here. There she goes, yeah. That's good. Oh, oh in and out. man. That hurts. Yeah. Well, I think that's the uh, one we talked about earlier when it, you know, for Brookdale didn't fall down. I think that's the uh, yeah, basketball guy trying to even, <laughs> evening it out right on the other side. That one fell a little bit off of the rim. It was off of. And Carlson gets a breather after a solid 13 minutes of continuous action. So I believe our announcer might have called it blue ball, but it will remain white ball for Brookdale. Good job by Bowler. And there you yeah, go, Bowler, Bowler coming yeah. in big. Good job. 
So we got a couple of the, the starters out there with the exception yeah. of uh, Standback. In for Carlson, yeah. Everybody else started out the game. Jasmine Palma coming in with that ferocity that she always has. Back up top there to Velez. Inside to Matthews with the shot. Couldn't get it to go. Great rebound by Bowler. Bringing it Got fast Palma back on the wing. The court. She sees oh, there it is. There's the pass. Great pass. Good catch. Oh, That's close. Finish. Palma's having a tough time yeah. on the inside. Shooting and trying to get the ball out to teammates. Letting some time click off this. Uh, oh, that, that was Tick off the clock, and you, you can't really afford that. Six minutes remaining. Brookdale up 69. Cougars 51. It's four on Palma, so she's going to catch a breather. Yeah. It happened before as well when she got picked up the other foul right to the bench. Yeah. She's having a bit of a tough time today. A little bit of foul trouble. So it doesn't look like anybody knows what's going on right now because both Bowler and Blackson are looking like they're trying to make the inbound pass. And still some, ball, yeah, yep. there we go. Okay, so I think we might all be on the same page. Bowler, good pass out there to Lukianov. Lukianov big in the first couple of games. She's been kind of quiet uh, this game. Coming in on a couple of possessions. Running to drive into the basket. Good effort. Couldn't get it to land. And Trap almost yeah, grabbed the strong. rebound. There's good Velez in the corner. Big time Ooh. shot. And she's she's knocked out her good looks. Oh, there's a, a good defensive play. Oh, deflected off of Reddington. So out to Alexis Brown. Coach Light really vocal, really trying to get them yeah. you know, to get good shots here. There it is. That's probably what they drew up there. They got a good look at it. Almost would have went up and in. Inside to Reddington. Good job there by Standback, kind of putting a block on uh, yeah. number 11, Melez. Giving Reddington an extra second to grab the basket. Yeah, good job by Brookdale. Just really forcing the issue here, just playing good defense and getting easy baskets. And there's a oh, there sloppy you go. pass yeah. there. Uh, Reddington out ahead of the pack there. Uh, Bowler didn't see yeah. it. Smart play, though, to back it down and mm -hmm. use up some shot clock yeah. here. No need to, to rush at this point. Luki and I'm trying to make something happen. And a tough spot there to try to get a basket. Velez weaving through traffic. Almost grabbed it. About four and a half minutes remaining in this game. Brookdale up 71 to 54. And Lukianov will head up to the stripe to take a couple of shots. I'd like to remind you to tune in to Brookdale Television throughout Monmouth County on Comcast Channel 21 and Verizon Fios Channel 46. Wednesdays and Sundays at 11.30 a.m., 5.30 p.m., and again at 11.30 p.m. For Brookdale Jersey Blues basketball games, we have replays of tonight's broadcast, so... If you just can't get enough of it and you want <laughs> to see us again, us. Yeah, yeah, you know, you just you really got to hear these voices. Us. It's hard to get enough of us. I know. Tune in on those days there and get your fix. Definitely. Oh, there you go. Good job there by Lukianov. Oh, good pass. pass. out to Reddington. Good. Right back to her. Oh, what's uh, that's it's a tough call. Yeah. I mean, you know, the pass is a little bit in front of Reddington. She tried to, you know, maybe all in one motion, catch, yeah. the, catch the ball and pass it. Just couldn't control it quick enough to uh, make the pass. So tried, tried to lead her yeah. a little bit, but yeah. um, maybe not enough zip on the ball. Yeah, it might have got away from uh, 
looking out a little bit there. Ooh. Ah, that was a bullet oh, inside. Yeah, yeah wow. Ass. And Williams kind of got up a little high for that, trying to get over the defense to catch that, and kind of came down hard. Fellas charge number 15, Paxton Reddington. Fourth personal, six, team five. So the Cougars in a little bit of foul trouble. Haven't had a chance to see that stat yet. Up nine over six on fouls over Brookdale, so they're gonna have to watch themselves. Cougars ball. DeGrush checks in the Blues. So DeGrush coming in for Reddington, who you just heard has four personal fouls for the game. And that one will be called on Bowler. Bowler, I keep saying Bowler. Yeah, I don't I, know I, I apologize, Lauren. So number five, Ayanna Williams will take a couple of free throws. Taking the second shot here. Bounces off the front of the, oh, good job there by Trapp. It almost would have looked like it would have been out on standback. Had her open, didn't see. Wasn't a very clear lane to pass yeah, the ball either. Like, yeah, good decision to just, yeah. you know, smart play, just pull it back out, lift the fight another play. Good seal off by Trapp and a great pass there. And there you go, Standback grabs it. Trapp is really having a way down low underneath the basket, just yeah. causing all kinds of problems for the smaller Camden. Back up to this 20 point lead with three and a half minutes remaining in the game. Well, there, good rebound by Standback. Getting it out to her teammate. Again, quick pace, great bounce pass. Yeah, good look inside. Yeah. Very good finish by Luke. Yeah, Luke Enoff. did a good job, too, controlling that, taking that power dribble, get right underneath the basket, the spot where she just go up quickly and score. And Coach Light will take the timeout. So attention all veterans, Brookdale Community College honors our veterans of all ages and provides an array of services to assist you. Whether you require information on veteran benefits, academic courses, or student support services, Brookdale is here to meet your academic needs. For more information, visit the Brookdale website at brookdalecc.edu. Click on Quick Links and select Veteran Affairs. I'd like to thank you for your service and wish you the best of luck in college. They showed the replay there while you were reading that, the, uh, the finish there by Lukianov. Oh, okay. So again, a smart, smart job of just catching the ball, taking yeah. that one dribble, get herself in a better position to finish. And that's really what it's been. It's been Brookdale's, Brookdale's ability to finish is really just underneath the basket, just doing a much, much better job than Camden, just getting those easy baskets. So we saw a fan grooving there to the uh, music we got playing in the Robert J. Collins Arena. As we're winding out this game, three minutes remaining. Brookdale bumped right up to a 22-point lead now. Might be their largest. I don't know if they got past 20 yeah, earlier. I, I think can't. it was it about 20. My mind. Yeah. yeah, about 20. And really, that, that that quick start really helping Brookdale just you know get through the the lulls, you know, and, yeah. and build back up on the lead because you know in a, in a much tighter game it might have been a different story. So the Cougars taking every second they can on the sideline, trying to get a game plan together. You have your two big shooters bringing it down. Blackson and Velez trying to find one of them open. That seems to be the, the game plan for, for most of it here in the second half. They've um, wa uh, wavered a little bit from what they were doing late in the, in the first half. A lot of physical inside play, a lot of defensive play as well. Now they're, they're trying to just put up those shots again. Another inside look for Lukianov. Looks like Trapp didn't see uh, stand back next yeah. to her. That's looked like what the ball was intended for. Good job. Ooh. Getting physical, not yeah, afraid to. Yeah, good job penetrating there. You know, forcing the action there. 5-2 Velez. Foul number 24, Jeff Standback. First personal, eight. So Velez trying to grab a couple easy baskets. Couldn't get the first one. Something that this team has been struggling with a little bit throughout this game is, is landing both of those free throws. 
We see Victoria Hayes, I think, for the first time today. Yeah, yep. Coming in for, for Bowler. Yeah. So she'll be done for the day as well. Hmm. So assistant coach over there, Jackie Trachimus, getting vocal with her team. That was a good effort there yeah. by Hayes, coming right off the bench, trying to fight for that rebound. So we're trying to Just preserve some clock here. Yep. Maybe you can oh, relate. Good back door there. Oh, good Ooh, job by Trap to get there. Big block by Trap. Commits the foul, but a good foul, you know, prevented the easy basket yeah. there. You can you could possibly relate some of these struggles of, of Camden um, to how young their squad is looking at their roster. The only returning player is 22 Kamari Talley. The rest are all freshmen. Yeah. Um, Brookdale, you know, has a little bit of a mixture, but you know, have a decent amount of returning players back. Yeah, and, you know, it speaks to the leadership aspect. You know, we're, we're fighting through, you know, the other teams making runs. Yeah. You know, po you know, there's points in the game where you have t tough time get, you know, getting baskets. You know, and, and the leadership of the of the you know upper class just really helps the younger, you know, the younger uh, their younger teammates just you know make better decisions and you know play with confidence and really get themselves you know you know out of bad situations. So stand back, trying to grab the the out of bounds there, couldn't grab it. Big, yeah. See, they're starting to key up on those shooters now. Double team in Velez. Physical inside there. And both teams over the, in the uh, double bonus. So from here on out, we'll shoot two free throws on uh, any foul that's called. So a minute 47 seconds remaining here in the game. Brookdale still holding strong on that 20 point lead. It, it's gone, it's gotten away from them here yeah. and there, you know, down to 12, 13, 15, uh, 13 or 15. Yeah, but a good job of answering runs yeah. has really been the yeah. story of the game today. That's been huge. They're not letting it slip away from them too much. And I think that speaks to their, their level of defensive intensity. It's just, you know, whenever you have a big lead, and you, you know, sometimes you, you let up a little bit on defense, but, you know, they're, they're intense the whole way through and just getting stops when they need them. You know, don't let them get back in the game. That's the big thing when you build a big lead like that. So they got most of their second squad in right now, with the exception of Carlson finishing out the game, minute and 38 trap. remaining. Finally getting a breather. Yep. Played a great game. She definitely deserves the yeah. uh, the rest of the game on the bench. Yeah, foul inside there. I believe called on Carlson. Yeah. And after you know, a quicker pace with you know limited fouls for most of the second half, the last few minutes here, really a lot of fouls committed by yeah. both teams. Yeah, you didn't see much in the opening in the opening minutes. We had said that and kind of put the curse on them. Yeah. I see a little spin move there. Come back down the court, Brookdale trying to close this one out. Grush up at the top, trying to get help from Carlson. Will remain Brookdale's ball. Uh, good steal there by Tally. Tough pass, trying to get it inside to Carlson. And good defense there by Luke, you know. Yep. Holding her ground, Wasn't not leaving afraid. her feet. Hayes maybe got a little bit, uh, going a little bit too much. So we'll get a timeout on the court for Camden. After the new year, it's going to be time to start planning that home renovation or home improvement project you've always dreamed of. Get started at the 24th annual Jersey Shore Home Show that will feature hundreds of vendors in both the Collins Arena and the Recreations and Events Center. For daily admission fees and show hours, call 732-224-1867. That will take place between Friday and Sunday of January 10th to the 12th. So come by for that. Collins Green doesn't only host basketball games. No, we, we, got everything, everything we do everything else. here. 
We got a bridal spectacular coming up later in January 26. So brides definitely be sure to register for that. Take place on the Linkeroff campus in this Collins Arena here. Meet over 75 of the area's top wedding professionals in a David's Bridal Runaway Fashion Show. And don't miss your chance to win a six day luxury honeymoon provided by the Travel Smiths. The event begins at 12 p.m. and concludes at 4. Go to Wedding Set Go for any other event details. Really a little bit of everything here. I like to be diverse here at Brookdale. Yeah. A little home improvement, some you know, bridal stuff. So you're looking to start your family. Oh. Come on down. She's been all over the floor tonight, she number has. 10, she's, yeah. She's taken a beating, a little bit of a beating tonight, but she's hung in there, been tough, made some big shots for them, you know, kept them in this game for a while. Yeah, if you had to pick an MVP for the team for yeah, Camden, definitely. it's her, definitely. hands down. You know. Velez doing a great yeah, job as too. well, but she's been uh black on both ends of the floor. Yep. Velez, you know, really good offensively. I think a little bit more of a contribution from Blackson on the yeah. defensive end. A lot of steals. Jasmine stand back at the line here. Couldn't get the bounce. Oh, but Luki and I, oh, almost grabbed it. Couldn't rein it in. Out to Velez. She Black got Velez her. just back and forth. Oh, good Ooh, block. big block. Yeah. Luki and have good closing speed there. Blackson gets the roll. Wow, good in. I wouldn't land it in for. It's 12 points. I mean, maybe a little little too late here. Yeah, but, yeah. You yeah know, too, a strong too, finish. too late with 22 seconds remaining. You can appreciate the effort, you know, yep. finishing strong. Well, you know, as a coach, you know, head coach Molly Ann Light over there doesn't want to show that she's given up. You yeah. know, you don't you want to show yeah, you show build, your team yeah, that you're in it the whole time. Yeah, and use it as a teaching moment. You know, yeah. if we were, if we made a few plays here and there, you know, it's a much closer game. And, you know, the end of this game needs to resemble, you know, what it could have been. Exactly. You know, in case it, it, it ever gets to that point, you know, so. It's important, to, you know, to show what everyone's got, you know, mentally, you know, and physically as well to be able to hang around, for, you know, and still yep. be able to play, you know, at a high level at this point in the game. Because you don't want to start packing it in mentally no. at this point yeah. in the game. It's going to send out a bad message to your sure. team. So very good, very good job by her coaching. Good job with the full court press. Oh, almost created a turnover. Blues. Those seconds ticking down here. Foul called on Cougars. I believe Kimberly McNellis will uh, will come up and take a couple of shots. Score right now: Brookdale 76 and the Cougars 64. So cut down at the lead a little bit, but um, like you just said, you know, a little, too little too late. You know, it's it's tough. Yeah. And grabs the other one. You got about 10 seconds left here, bringing down the court, trying to make something happen. Couldn't get it to land, yeah. and they got it. Come on. Another timeout. 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 So fighting until the yeah. last second ticks off that clock. Definitely. Good effort all around on both sides of the court. Cougars just falling a little bit short, fighting the whole time now. Yeah. And Coach Davina really just using this opportunity to speak to the second unit, just show a few things. I mean, he's actually got a couple of starters in there in this unit, so just kind of teach him, you know, maybe finish the game a little bit strongly. Maybe, you know, on that last possession especially, yeah. you know, allowing the offensive board, maybe not what he'd like to see, but... All in all, you know, you can't be too upset about the effort. They, they played a pretty good game. They have, Considering, yeah. you know, offensively, you know, besides Trap, not too much going on. Uh -huh. But, she, you know, she carried them. And, you know, sometimes you got to do that for your team. The overall consistency yeah. maybe not there, a yeah. little spotty. Yeah. Um, but, but still, defensively, I mean, the consistency, it was there consistently yeah, on defense. Yeah. Well, I mean, when you're uh, when you're winning in double digits, you can't find and the other much team to complain is, about. They were launching threes, and they were hitting them, and they still did a good job of, yep. you know, causing turnovers and, and pressuring the shooters when they had to. Absolutely. Next couple oh. games coming up for Brookdale. Oh. A little touchdown pass there. Getting it in. Upcoming games for Brookdale. They go on a bit of a road trip. They have uh, Atlantic Cape, Sussex, Gateway Community College, Bristol Community College, and ended off with Morris before you see us back here on January 16th against Mercer, uh, as well as Passaic. So 
We won't see you for a little while, about a month. Yeah, yeah about a month. But uh, we will keep you updated. Yeah, Stay yeah. tuned to 90.5 tonight for yeah. any, any basketball updates as we end the game here. Final score, Brookdale 80 and the Camden Cougars 66. So tough game for the Cougars. Uh, Brookdale came out, yeah. kept that 20-point lead really for most was, of the game. And it was really that start, that hot start they got yeah. off to, really built the lead and just kind of just kept it and hung on to it. And, you know, Camden made some runs. Give them credit. You know, they shot pretty well yep. in spurts. You know, and then, you know, as we started to talk about maybe getting a few stops, they started to make those stops, cut mm -hmm. the lead to about 12. But then Brookdale just turned it up on the offensive end and got trapped the ball yeah. down low. She got easy baskets and, and really just responded well to the, to the run that Camden was making. So great game here. Stick around. Uh, we have our men's game coming up, facing off against the Cumberland Dukes. It's going to be a great game. Men's team ranked for the 12th consecutive poll, top in the nation. So stick around for that game, and we will be back in a few minutes.